Yerb, good morning. Yerb. It's Omar, o, Omar Clifton with Black Pulp, and I'm here with my man J.S. Dot, Philly, New York Connection. What's up with y'all? How's it going, everybody? Oh. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead, brother. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm actually just looking at a lot of stuff right now. Um, it, I actually pulled out the Xbox flyer, and I'm just really, I'm excited today. A little exhausted, but I'm excited. I'm always exhausted. I'm always moving. Hey, that's the grind life. That's the grind life. Yep. But, uh, we wanted to get this video out to y'all and talk to y'all about what is Black Pulp. Forgive my eyes. The screen is huge. Camera's on the top. So if I look at him, it looks like I'm looking at my nose or my chin. And I'm just short. So <laughs> I'm actually eye level with the middle of the screen and not the camera. So, <laughs> so um, one of the best things about you know, comic production period are the cons. We come out, we get to get in our little nerd groups, uh, the cosplayers, we get to see each other, it's all love. Yeah. And for us as a group, that's always the period where we get to evaluate ourselves. You know, um, yeah. my mentor, Dean out here in Philly, when I left, when we left Ekbach, I called him, you know, get some advice. He's like, he's like, yo, oh, let me tell you something. Oh, I'm, I'm seeing what you're doing, I saw the pictures and you know, that, that's where we at. I'm writing this book, and I mean, I'm wanting to get some uh, work on it. And you guys are at the ideation phase. You're finally seeing where your niche is and, you know, how things are going, what's working. And that's because yeah. you know, we go out there to J1 Con. Um, my first time, it was it was a maze balls, of course. Uh, we always talk it to was. the And, you know, talk to the, the people who come to the table. What are you interested in? What are your thoughts on, you know, comics? How are you? And uh, what do you like? Invariably, you run into artists. You run into artists, you run into other blurs, geeks, whatever you want to call us. Yeah. We get the feedback, you run into other great brands and uh, beautiful people who are in the same industry, and it always defaults back. So, whether we're properly putting out our message, whether we're properly doing what we're doing, and the uh, core of Black Pulp was always community. You know, like back in the day, we friends over to our friends, you know, just get together and make something. Care about whether who's gonna like it, who's gonna do y'all were like, yo, let's do this. Yeah, something beautiful came yeah. up, and that's kind of the essence of Black Pole. It's our idea of artists coming together to pr produce one thing that promotes us all, and we really wanted to hash into that. Where you know, what is Black Pole? Because that's always the question. So, what is Black Pole? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like a really really strong drink. <laughs> a strong drink or like a question that a haggled gargoyle in a trench coat and a top hat ash you is peeping out of the shadows. But he's black. Yeah. And you have to decide. You're going to follow the shady looking gargoyle down the alley or you're going to keep on going about your business. You're right. Right. <laughs> but Black Pulp started as an idea of bringing artists together. And we were trying to figure out how we had all our tools. You know, there's the internet, there's past other professional dealings or whatever, and then there's the paper to pencil. Yeah. And we all kind of come into this thing primarily through books, you know, comic yeah. books, sci-fi novels, fantasy novels, or games, cartoons and things were usually the Yeah. But as time we went on, into it. Um, right. We are all heavily trained in the art of the pencil. Yeah. Or, or, yeah. Pencil. or at least, you know, writing story, drawing characters. And so our first thought was a book. The book, the anthology, Black Pulp, the idea that, you know, you can get a writer who can write a story, um, a comic artist who can develop, you know, their own type of story, and we all put it together. And just like every individual does at a con, we buy our products wholesale. So everyone who works in pays the same price for the book, and we all hit individual cons, the same cons, and we basically show the united front for what me and Jay call illustrated entertainment. Yes. And it's something I think I saw first Otakon we went to when we went down to the floor. Remember, we were shopping, uh, we were running the pitch, so we went down there to meet. Yes, me. the original uh, children of gun. Yeah, and yeah. so we go down to the, uh, not oh, the, yeah. but the uh, exhibition floor, and I'm like, yo. Mm -hmm. And you go in there, it's like, Toei has a whole booth. You know, yeah. they have a whole booth, so it's like they have various people supporting the same brand. And everybody yeah. has to put their take in, in that idea. I think the best part about it was uh, last time we were talking, and we were talking about what really is Black Pulp now that we have all this information. And you said, it's my universe. Facts, if you're part of Black yeah. Pulp, your universe. It's not yeah. you're putting something in someone else's. It's yours. It's your spin. It's 
your swag with a tag, basically. Yeah. I want to add to that, too. Like going back to Otakon, because that was really a great experience for me overall. But when we were pitching uh, Children of Gun, and this is what really had – and I don't think I even told you this at the time, oh, but, like, that really got me turning, like, an idea of how things really were when it came to trying to get your work out there. Here we are – okay, people, here we were. Omar and I, it was my first time being in an environment like that. Oh, that was your first time too, right? So we're in there, we're geeking out. They had, a, you know, the video games, a uh, whole room with video games at, uh, um, at the time of Shonen Jump tournament. And then after that, we sat in a panel for Madhouse, right? And after the panel, we spoke with the main dude in, in Madhouse and he had his translator. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Masao Moriyama. Yes. He was the head before Satoshi Kon took over. Exactly. Yeah. yeah he keep had that like, in mind. Keep, keep like, that in mind. I, he, well, <laughs> and this guy, he was like, forget Russian guards or any type of guards. He looked like just a statue, like a living statue. When we were talking to him, that's what I looked at him as. And I'm just like, here, Omar, you give him the book. You give him the book in my head. <laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, he, he takes it, and his translator is just telling him what we were – but. Pretty much Omar was saying, because at that time, me, I guess I was a bit starstruck, so I kind of froze up. And Omar was doing pretty much all the talking. And while he was talking, you know, he was just flipping through the book. He was looking through it. And he's like, yeah, mm, mm, mm. he t tells his translator or whatever and, and everything. And, and I think we gave him the book, right? He didn't give it back. Did like we, were, we were green. We had no idea that it was a bad idea to give a company an entire uh, production Bible. Exactly. Exactly. So, if we're not, we're gonna shoot the shot. <laughs> yeah. So, like, yeah, we're gonna pull that arrow back and let it fly. And and by the end of it all, I thought like this. I was like, there has to be an easier way to try to get work out here. Here we are, some people like we used to call it starving artists. You know, a couple of starving artists that evolved into actual creators we created a story even if it was a bible we have everything in it characters etc cetera, etc cetera. it's like there's no reason why we should get our work out here that's what my mindset was but it is so difficult at that time to get work out there what was that 2003 2004 yeah yeah now, now you know, it's very difficult nowadays you have nowadays you have the platform it's called the cloud the internet we have social media we have apps we can develop this we can outreach to people we can actually go to companies and mm -hmm. you know without having to sit out at a convention but the conventions make it that much more personal and you you know you get to in person showcase your stuff and the vendors is what really opened my eyes yeah like you said they had a whole toe that had its whole section there but the vendors is what really blew my mind away. I feel like this was where we should have been. This is where we should be. And Omar was already saying that. As I was thinking, Omar was like, yo, this is where we should be. And I was like, you're right. <laughs> you know, and fast forward uh, to J1Con. And there we are. But yeah. And then, of course, the, the time spent with other entrepreneurs and other businesses and stuff like that. And I know for me, I developed a mindset of, if you if if I got ten dollars and you find something a million dollars valuable, I'm sure you finna get at least five hundred million out of that. Exactly. exactly. Everything you got for something that nobody's buying unless you see a greater value. Right. So at some point it became if somebody can see the value in something I'm doing, then maybe that means it could be a blessing that I could, you know, water that seed, till that soil, and then mm -hmm. do that fruit for myself. Because once you sell the seeds, you ain't gonna get too much off of the tree. You know, nope. the apple seed, I'll give you the apple seed for a couple bushels of apples. Now, the boy you sold the seeds to fit to go plant the whole crop. He's going to get apples every season for the rest of his life. Yep. You got yourself a couple bushels. I'm not greedy. I just know that I don't, I don't want nobody going to my fridge taking my grub. Exactly. Basically. If yes. I got a farm and I, I'm growing crops, I'm not going to go out and buy them. And so, no. we see the, the, the starving artist philosophy. Yep. I got 10, you offer me a mill, and they sitting there like, yeah, we're going to get 500 more of these. Take this, take this. We're we going to yep. put credits, but a lot of times those people, 
we call them one hit wonders. It's like, are they? Or did somebody catch them before they could flourish and grow? Yeah. Scoop that, scoop that sprout up, put it in another garden. Now this person, they feel like they got there. Maybe they did. But I see a lot of times yeah. that you know you get your stuff out there, get sold, and that's it. That's yep. It. In in the world of the in this type of uh, realm, um, to me, one hit wonders, or if you're a one hit wonder or considered one, you have one hit. Just think in the in the right mindset, you can make a million hits. You can make endless hits, um, and that's pretty much what. I, to me, what Black Coat represents is not so much all about us because we make our own work. But as we're making our own work and pushing it out there, we see all these other people with work and they're doing like the same thing and they have their stories. They're like, hey, I try to sh push to Marvel. They want me to write this and that and, and for this story, but I have this nice cool story and it's awesome. Come to us. We'll yeah. push you out there. Because uh -oh, independent... Keep working on your work. Keep working yeah. on it. Don't change yeah. nothing. You got a PG-13 or a youth banner, but work your story, promote your story, yep. and then we all going to get these books to sell it together. So you're selling your story. I'm selling your story. Jay's selling mm -hmm. your story. Everybody's pushing you, and you're pushing us. It's, it's yeah. co-laboring is the term I want to use. Co-laboring and self-determining. Those, yeah. are, those are, you know, key points. So I guess to say in closing, Black Pulp is a... We're a group looking to work together. We yeah. want to flourish. We want to flourish. We want to walk together, you know, side by side, not in line one at a time, but take all of us and take none of us type of deal. Because that's yeah. how it's, it's all or none. It's now, all right, y'all got 75 people. We only want, um, give me that guy and that guy and the rest of y'all. Who's that tall guy in the back over there? He look like he's 10 feet tall. We want him. Yeah, we're going to put him over here. I don't like the way you look on over there. We're we're not playing dodgeball, but if we were, everyone will get a chance to shine. Yeah, that's kind of how the deal. It's not even about whether I'm going to make it big or he's going to make it big or whatever. We're all doing this work. Whoever's going to make it big is going to make it big. Or maybe yeah. not, that's the gamble we take anyway. You know, yeah, we want to give props to them because we feel just as much as us, We those people deserve that outreach. They deserve to have their work shown and displayed and people to take knowledge of them, people who enjoy that fellow geeks like us, you know, those who read comics, manga, who listen to that type of music, whichever we want, and the people who make and create it, we want, your, we want you to be seen and just expand with us. We're like, we're a universe. We are all our own universe and we always expand it. It's just, right. we're, we're trying to help everyone expand. And for me, out of humility, I can't even say help. It's like, let's work together. Yeah, let's got, work together. I got my fault. Cause in, like yeah, because yeah. Yeah, it's not like you guys need help. It's just that we see you, and we know that the whole world needs to see you, 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 and all of us, you know? Because in the end, we'll end up just staring at each other. It would be kind of weird, but we just say, hey, you growing, and you growing, and you're growing. You know, we profit from each other. United we stand, like the, like the saying goes, you know. Yeah, and that's kind of how we've been framing it for the past, I'll say four years. 2020 would make it. Yeah, 2016, we dropped an amalgam, so i say four years. But I feel like it's kind of weird. We took that much time to work it out and see exactly what was going on. Yeah. And that advice back. So this is the type of talk we have at every table. And doing Xbox digitally, Let's have our, our con table talks and put them out there. And these are things we talk about with people to come to the table. Because for me, when I go, the youth is great. I want to encourage them, but I also like to talk to, you know, other producers, other developers. So I see what you're doing. I see what they're doing. But if we're all in this same thing, asking for the same you know, response, what are we doing together? Right. Granted, I don't need to hammer that. You know, um, yeah. the orange offender done pulled the trigger. So we already ready to come together. So like, yeah. And I know everybody has this message. We just wanted to make sure that we were, you know, counted upon. You know, look, we we here. This is what yeah. we do. And yeah, you know, that, we're, yeah. we're, we're getting it tight. And so, I think that's another question that people ask too. It's like, when, okay, so let's say you guys black pulp. What do you guys do? I mean, you guys just make comic books. Like, you you know, it's one of the questions. Uh, you know, 
apart from it, – it's like someone kicks in the door and someone says, who, do, who are you and what do you want? <laughs> you know? So, you so know? What, what we do is we provide illustrated entertainment. We do uh, pinups, posters, comics. Um, we're getting back into our animation groove. Our primary means of connecting with the people is the Black Pulp Anthology. It's, it originally started as three stories, three artists, one book when we were moving quarterly. We've actually decided to slow down. I to release a book so we have 150 pages and at least five separate artists or creators. Yep. That, it was just us. And we were constantly reaching out, reaching out, but it's hard mm -hmm. and produce and work. So at this point, we've got four books out. Well, basically five if you count the uh, collection. And we're going to consider those our proof of concept. Proof of concept that we can work together, not only develop separate stories, but also work together on building a universe that we can interact with at our will and tie our work into it. So that's pretty much where we stand. Uh, and of course, through the video, you know, we have a bit of a background. We've been kind of bopping around here and there. As uh, my man put it on one of his raps up and under the game, producer. <laughs> you don't see me, but I'm working. You know, but if, if you see me, I might not be working. That's kind right. of what it is. So, <laughs> Where we at and what we doing, um, we will be back and we will be putting out some more work and showing a lot of pre-production for where we're going next. Uh, you're going to get a segment from my man JS Dot on what grinds my gears, something we do when we're talking, what was yep. work and how can we fix it. So we're going to have a grind my gears segment a little later. I'm also going to be releasing a bit of a demo on a new way I want to interact on the internet. With as far as I mean, we're talking videos, animation, things like that. So I'm kind of in a rather pre production uh, narrative uh, video, so to speak. And I'm going to be putting, I'll say about 30 minutes of that work up as well. So we will be checking you guys out later. Thanks for kicking, this with, kicking it with us. Once again, one love. Big up the Xbox. 19 years strong and counting. Let's go. See y'all there. Rajan Bavel.